All right, in this video, we're going to look at a common distance rate time word problem that you'll run across in your algebra class. And this is an upstream downstream problem, but you can definitely run across an airplane problem where you're flying with the wind versus against the wind. It's the same scenario, except we got a boat in our problem, and you can run across an airplane problem like this. So we have a boat, and that boat takes the same time to go 12 miles downstream as it takes to go 8 miles upstream. If the current of the river is 3 miles per hour, find the speed of the boat in still water. So the speed of the boat in still water is what we're looking for. I'm going to call that B for speed of the boat in still water. And we have two scenarios going on. In this case, we're going upstream and we're going downstream. So I'm going to label this little chart down here, upstream and downstream. Now, when we go upstream and when we go downstream, if we're in a boat and we're rowing this boat, if we're going upstream, we have the speed that we can row at. That's going to be the B, the speed of the boat. But then since we're going upstream, you're going against the current. Upstream means the current is hitting the front of your boat and it's kind of almost pushing you back if you're not rowing fast enough. So a way to think about that is the rate that you could go upstream is going to be the speed of the boat, but we subtract the speed of the current. The current is going to slow you down if you're rowing into it. So we're going to subtract three from that because the current of the river is three miles per hour. Whereas if you're going downstream, you have the speed that you can go at or the speed of the boat, but then the current's also pushing you. So we're going to add on the three miles per hour there. Very common, always going to be like that. Subtract it when you go against it or upstream or into the wind and you add that current or wind speed when you're going downstream or with the wind. It's pushing you along. Now, we don't know how much time has passed, but notice it does say it takes the same amount of time. So I don't know how much time has passed, but I know the time is going to be the same for both of them. So I'm going to put a T for both of these time spots. Now, what about the distances? What about the distance upstream? Distance upstream, well, let's see. Eight miles upstream, I see that. See that right there? Eight miles upstream, I'm going to put that in the distance for the upstream. And then we also have this 12 miles downstream. So downstream distance is going to be 12. So now that we had this organized, we can use our formula for rate times time. Rate times time is equal to distance. And we can form two equations. This one's going to be a little bit different than a lot of your other distance rate times because you have two unknowns. But let's just go ahead and write this out. We got our rate times our time equals our distance. So rate times our time, you can put the T on the other side, it doesn't matter, is equal to our distance, that's that first one, and then this other one here, rate times the time is equal to our distance. Now, we're trying to find the speed of the boat, but yet we have two unknowns. We got the B, we don't know the speed of the boat in still water, and we don't know how much time has passed, but we did know it was the same amount of time. Well, with that in mind, we can get the t by itself in this equation and the t by itself in this equation. Let's do that. Now, I'm not going to distribute here because really what I want to do, I'm taking t times this stuff. Well, if I want to get t by itself, since t is getting multiplied by this stuff, let's divide by that stuff on both sides to get t by itself. So b minus 3 over b minus 3, they cancel out. Therefore, we have t equals. 8 over b minus 3. Now for this one over here, very similar. Let's divide by b plus 3 on both sides. So the b plus 3s cancel. And therefore we have t equals 12 over b plus 3. So now we have two equations. Yes, we still have two unknowns. But remember, it took the same amount of time. Not only that, more importantly is that we got t equals some stuff and t equals some stuff. Well, if t equals this and t equals this, then these two pieces right here and right here have to be equal to each other. And that's how we're going to solve this equation. So let's set those two pieces equal to each other. 8 over b minus 3 is equal to 12 over b plus 3. And now we have like a proportion here. You know, and a common way to solve a proportion is to cross multiply. So I'm going to cross multiply here. I'm going to multiply those. So we have 8 times b plus 3, and then I'm going to cross multiply the other way, and that's going to be 12 times b minus 3. 
now we can solve this equation for b because we have just gotten it down to one single variable but you know depending on your equation solving skills this can still be a little bit tricky so let's be careful here we need to distribute let's clean up this side let's distribute the 8 8 times b is 8b we'll find that and then 8 times 3 is 24 that's a positive 24 is equal to over here 12 times b is 12b and 12 times a negative 3 is a negative 36 so now we have B on both sides, and we're trying to solve for B, the speed of the boat in still water. I like to move the smaller B to the bigger B. And the way I want to do this is I want to subtract that 8B from this side, and also we have to do it from the other side. Always do it on both sides of your equation. 8B minus 8B cancels out. That gives us 0. But we still have a 24 left over here, and that's going to be equal to 12B minus 8B is 4B minus 36. Now let's add 36 both, to both sides to get the B by itself. So adding that 36 to both sides. 24 plus 36, feel free to add this up, but you should get 60 is equal to 4B. 4B is all we have left on this side of the equals because those 36 is canceled out. Our last step here is to divide by 4. And that's going to cancel those 4s out there. Notice we do have B by itself. And B is equal to 15 because 60 divided by 4 is 15. Therefore, we can say, of course, we would need to check this, but the speed of the boat in still water is 15 miles per hour. Now, you could check this, too, and I'm going to kind of give you a, a quick way to check this. If we, um, if we look up here, so we know B is 15, right? We've solved for B, we got 15. So if we find the speed, our speed, our rate upstream, if B is 15, 15 minus 3 actually gives us a 12. So that's going to be the speed that we go when we go upstream. Whereas if we're going downstream, remember B is 15, 15 plus 3, that's going to be 18, right? So this, this right here is the speed going upstream. This is the speed going downstream. But again, the speed of the boat in still water is 15. That's the answer to our problem. I'm just trying to show you a way to check your work. So now let's see if these T's are going to work out for us. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of do this over here to the side. It's not going to take too much work. I'm going to put it right here just like in a little checkbox. So now that we had this speed times this time equals a distance, I'm going to take 12 times T is equal to 8. Rate times time equals my distance. Let's do the other one too. Rate times time equals distance. So 18 times t is equal to 12. And now let's just divide both of these, uh, both sides here by 12 to get this t by itself. So t is equal to 8 twelfths, which sim simplifies to 2 thirds of an hour. Well, check out what you get over here. Divide by 18 on both sides. And notice we get t is equal to 12 over 18, divided top and bottom by 6, you get 2 thirds. Now, how is that telling me that I did this right? Well, it's telling me I did this right because notice we're getting the same amount of time both for this T and this T, and that's exactly what the problem says. A boat takes the same time to go 12 miles downstream as it takes to go 8 miles upstream. That's what it's telling me there. But again, you know, just a few minutes ago when we got down here to B equals 15, that is the answer to our problem. The speed of the boat in still water is 15 miles per hour. And there you have it. That's an example, a very common example of a distance rate time problem. Uh, again, this is tied to a boat going upstream and downstream, but this can be tied to airplane problems going with the wind and flying into the wind. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.